Chapter 19 of Death World by Harry Harrison. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Greg Marguerite. Death World by Harry Harrison. Chapter 19. Truck's almost here. You know what to do? Naxa asked. Jason nodded and looked again at the dead man. Some beast had torn his arm off and he had bled to death. The severed arm had been tied into the shirt sleeve, so from a distance it looked normal. Seen close up, this limp arm plus the white skin and shocked expression on the face gave Jason an unhappy sensation. He liked to see his corpses safely buried. However, he could understand its importance today. Here they are. Wait until his back's turned, Naxa whispered. The armored truck had three powered trailers in tow this time. The train ground up the rock slope and whined to a stop. Crannon climbed out of the cab and looked carefully around before opening up the trailers. He had a lift robot along to help him with the loading. Now, Naxa hissed. Jason burst into the clearing, running, shouting Crannon's name. There was a crackling behind him as two of the hidden men hurled the corpse through the foliage after him. He turned and fired without stopping, setting the thing afire in mid-air. There was a crack of another gun as Crannon fired. His shot jarred the twice-dead corpse before it hit the ground. Then he was lying prone, firing into the trees behind the running Jason. Just as Jason reached the truck, there was a whirring in the air, and hot pain ripped into his back, throwing him to the ground. He looked around as Crannon dragged him through the door and saw the metal shaft of a crossbow sticking out of his shoulder. Lucky, the Pyron said, an inch lower would have got your heart. I warned you about those grubbers. You're lucky to get off with only this. He lay next to the door and snapped shots into the now quiet wood. Taking out the bolt hurt much more than it had going in. Jason cursed the pain as Crannon put on a dressing and admired the singleness of purpose of the people who had shot him. They had risked his life to make his escape look real, and also risked the chance that he might turn against them after being shot. They did a job completely and thoroughly, and he cursed them for their efficiency. Crannon climbed warily out of the truck after Jason was bandaged. Finishing the loading quickly, he started the train of trailers back towards the city. Jason had an anti-pain shot and dozed off as soon as they started. While he slept, Crannon must have radioed ahead because Kirk was waiting when they arrived. As soon as the truck entered the perimeter, he threw open the door and dragged Jason out. The bandage pulled and Jason felt the wound tear. He ground his teeth together. Kirk would not have the satisfaction of hearing him cry out. I told you to stay in the buildings until the ship left. Why, why did you leave? Why did you go outside? You, you talked to the grubbers, didn't you? With each question he shook Jason again. I didn't talk to anyone, Jason managed to get the words out. They tried to take me. I shot two, hit out until the trucks came back. Got another one then, Crannon said. I saw it. Good shooting. Think I got some too. Let him go, Kirk. They shot him in the back before he could reach the truck. That's enough explanations, Jason thought to himself. Don't overdo it. Let him make up his mind later. Now's the time to change the subject. There's one thing that will get his mind off the grubbers. I've been fighting your war for you, Kirk, while you stayed safely inside the perimeter. Jason leaned back against the side of the truck as the other loosened his grip. I found out what your battle with this planet is really about, and how you can win it. Now let me sit down and I'll tell you. More Pyrans had come up while they talked. None of them moved now, like Kirk. They stood frozen, looking at Jason. When Kirk talked, he spoke for all of them. What do you mean? Just what I said. Pyrus is fighting you, actively and consciously. Get far enough out from this city and you can feel the waves of hatred that are directed at it. No, that's wrong. You can't because you've grown up with it. But I can, and so could anyone else with any sort of psi sensitivity. There is a message of war being beamed against you constantly. The life forms of this planet are psi sensitive and respond to that order. They attack and change and mutate for your destruction, and they'll keep on doing so until you're all dead, unless you can stop the war. How? Kirk snapped the word and every face echoed the question. By finding whoever or whatever is sending that message. 
The life forms that attack you have no reasoning intelligence. They are being ordered to do so. I think I know how to find the source of these orders. After that, it will be a matter of getting across a message, uh, asking for a truce and an eventual end to all hostilities. A dead silence followed his words as the Pyrans tried to comprehend the ideas. Kirk moved first, waving them all away. Go back to your work. This is my responsibility and I'll take care of it. As soon as I find out what truth there is here, if any, I'll make a complete report. The people drifted away silently, looking back as they went. End of Chapter 19 of Death World by Harry Harrison